In this episode, I'll be showing you how to start calculating your own EMA cross strategy. There's a couple of things that you'll need for this episode, both of which I've covered in previous episodes, and I've put the links in the description below. The first thing is you need the ability to calculate your own exponential moving average, also known as the EMA. We'll be using an EMA 50 and an EMA 200 in this particular episode. So if you want to know how to do that and you haven't done it already, check out the links in the description. The second thing that you need is the EMA cross indicator. This indicator just calculates when the two EMAs cross each other, and that's what we use to generate our buy and sell signals. Once you've got those ready, let's continue. We love building and generating profitable trading algorithms here at algoquant.trade, and our algorithm one has been performing really, really well. From 12 months of backtesting, it generated 102% returns, net profit. From in the last three weeks, it's generated 10.01% net returns. If you want to sign up to receive signals from this algorithm, why not head over to algoquant.trade and sign up today? Through the EMA cross strategy, as we're going to be using it in this tutorial series. Now, a quick note for everyone who's watching, this is just an example strategy. I haven't back tested it. I make absolutely no guarantees about the results. I'm purely using it for demonstration purposes only. So please don't apply this to your trading strategy without a little bit of extra testing. All right, let me talk you through the strategy. So how an EMA cross strategy works is a trade is only generated when two EMAs cross each other, hence the name EMA cross strategy. In our scenario, we're going to be using the 50 and the 200 as our two EMAs. So a buy signal will be generated when an EMA 50 crosses above the EMA 200. In the strategy, that's an uh, indication that the trend or momentum uh, of the trade is going to, or of the, the currency pair is going to start trending upwards. In a similar manner, the a sell signal is generated when the EMA 50 crosses below the EMA 200. Now in more advanced tutorials, which you can get if you subscribe to the channel, uh, I'll be starting to talk you through how you can also add in a few little extra features so that for instance, if you have an open buy um, position and you suddenly generate a sell signal, you can sell off all of your signals and kind of reduce your risk, but that's a future one. All right, let me talk you through then how we go from a buy signal getting generated to calculating the buy values that we might be using. So here's the rules. Number one, for each trade, the stop loss is the corresponding highest EMA. So in our scenario, it's always gonna be the EMA 200, whether it's a buy or a sell. Now, if we have a buy signal, the entry price, which is known as the stop price, is the high of the previously completed, completed candle. All right, uh, the take profit then is the absolute distance. So talking about a green candle, the take profit is the absolute distance between the stop price and the stop loss added to that entry point. So it's just a one-to-one -one strategy. Now, if we're talking about a sell signal, it's pretty much the opposite. So the <clears throat> stop loss is always gonna be that EMA 200 value. The entry price is the low of the previously completed candle, all right? So the entry price is just the low of that previous candle. The take profit then is the entry, the distance between the entry price and the stop price subtracted from that entry price. And that just kind of gives us a one-to-one -one from a sell position. All right, hopefully that all made sense. Let's get back to the code. Let's start constructing our strategy. So I've divided this into two parts. The first part is about getting rid of that mess that you can see I just highlighted in main.py. There's just so much going on there. We really wanna just extract that and abstract it away into a function. The second part, which we'll cover in the next episode then, is about how you generate trading signals, including your take profit, stop loss, and stop price. So let's get started in, in the strategy. Start by creating a brand new file, which we're gonna treat almost like a library in and of itself, which is called EMA underscore cross underscore strategy. Now, as you build your uh, trading bot more and more, you'll start to generate your own strategies. And it's really easy to be able to keep track of them when you keep them in separate files like this. So the pattern that I'm actually using here is something that I use for all of the trading bots that we develop. 
the first thing that we do is we're going to create the fun the main function for the strategy and we're going to call that the ema underscore cross underscore strategy and that is going to accept to the key variables that we need for our strategy and they are the symbol the time frame ema1 and ema2 for other strategies you might <clears throat> retrieve other sorts of data um, that you might need for it i'll add in my comments here Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to list out the pseudocode of the steps that we're going to work through for this episode and the next one. Like I said, this is the pattern that I use for all of the algorithms that I develop, including trading bots for other people. So the first step is always going to be to retrieve the data that we need. Now, the reason I do that is because, you know, today and in this series, we're working with MetaTrader, but you could use all sorts of different places to get your data from. You might use a Merrytrade, you might be working with Binance or Alpaca.Markets, or you may just be working with something completely different. This pattern allows you to abstract every single time that you retrieve the data and continue to keep the algorithm itself separate from the place you get the data. Step two will be to calculate the indicators, which for this particular strategy will be the EMA50 and EMA200. And step three will be to determine if a trade event has occurred. And if a trade event has occurred, to calculate the values that we're going to use for our um, trading signal. Now, I'm gonna put in the function names that we'll be developing here, just so that I can keep it easy to keep track of in my head. And then we're going to start getting into developing. And in this episode, we're gonna look at step one and step two. So let's look at step one, which is to retrieve the data. Now, like I said, in this particular series, all of our data is getting retrieved from MetaTrader. Uh, you can have a look at the channel history and a, and a playlist for it that'll allow you to, you know, go and see how you want to retrieve those that data from MetaTrader if you need it. But we're going to start by creating that get data function. So you can see there that I defined the get data. Um, a function and it's got two aspects to it one is the symbol which should be self-evident uh, and the second one is the time frame uh, which also should hopefully be quite uh, self-evident there now in the comments i've specifically called out that we're getting the data from mt5 if you have a look at some of my more advanced trading bots particularly the python trading bot i try to keep that as generic as possible to enable me to access all sorts of different places to get the data Okay, and then we're going to use the library that we created in previous episodes, been the MT5 library, to actually go ahead and retrieve that data. And the way we set up that MT5 library was to return a data frame to us. You can see here a bit of a fun fact. <coughs> I've just been programming a different programming bot earlier, so I had to quickly go and have a look at the place, <laughs> what I'd called the function in this particular series. So I went and found it. I went back to this and we continued on from there. Hey, okay, we'll be working with candlesticks here.
And we only need a thousand candles uh, to get an accurate EMA. And then we return the data back to the function. With our get data function completed, let's update our EMA cross strategy function to take advantage of it. The first step is to retrieve the data. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a variable and use the function we just created to store the data in it. Now, like I said earlier, one of the amazing advantages of doing it like this is if in the future you choose to use a different exchange, it's going to be really, really simple to update it. If you follow our channel, I'll show you in future episodes how to do this with Binance, Alpaca.Markets, and more. For the second step then, we need to be able to calculate our EMA <clears throat> indicators and our EMA cross indicators. And this is the part where we're going to be able to get rid of all of the mess that we've currently got in main.py. To do that, create a function called calc underscore indicators. This function will be responsible for taking a data frame and calculating our EMA 50, our EMA 200, and our EMA cross. So let's do that now. see there as always adding in my comment for the function one of the cool ways about how we've designed this entire algorithm so far is that if you want to do an EMA cross for an EMA 8 and an EMA 15, it's really, really easy. Literally, all you have to do is change the EMA 1 and EMA 2 to be 8 and 15, and this whole thing will work all by itself. When we get into in future episodes talking about how to backtest your strategy, that's going to be really, really important because you'll be able to figure out for yourself on a given currency pair or stock pair or whatever you want to do, what's going to be the most effective and most profitable strategy for you. Now, this pattern we're about to go through now should be really, really familiar to you if you've been following us. All we're going to be doing is taking our data frame passing it to each of the EMA calculators and EMA cross calculators and updating the data frame. At the end of it, we'll have a data frame with extra columns in it with all of the information that we need for our strategy. A quick plug for our don't repeat yourself or dry principle. You can see there I'm able to use the exact same function to calculate both EMAs. Don't have to create code for each one. And finally, we're going to calculate the EMA cross. You can also see here the power of having an indicator library, how easy it is to call these functions that we've created. Okay, with our completed data, we'll return that back to the function. With our completed function, 
We'll quickly add it back into our strategy before we head back to main.py in order to update it. So you can see here in step two, we calculated our indicators. And now all we're going to do is pass our data frame into that calculator indicators function and get everything back. Now, at the bottom of this function, I'm going to place in there a return statement, which is going to return all the information back to the calling function. Now, the really cool thing about this is as we build out this function in this episode and more, we'll actually be able to just use this over and over again. So now we go back to main.py. I really want to just get rid of all of those things. It's a little bit too complex to put in main.py and makes it very unwieldy to manage. And that's going to be particularly relevant as we make this function, this robot more and more complex. So we'll start by importing the EMA cross strategy into main. And like I said at the start of this episode, you can actually use this to use all sorts of different strategies. Um, although all we're going through today is the EMA cross one. Okay, I'm going to pass in our symbol, which will come straight from our, um, our for loop. Our time frame is coming straight from our project settings. Our EMA1 and EMA2, so the 50 and 200. And let's see what comes out. How good is that? And pretty fast. We can actually simplify this a little bit further by extracting the time frame as well. Now, we won't be doing this in this particular series, but you could, in theory, actually have multiple different time frames that you calculate across as well, adding even more power to your algorithmic trading bot. But doing it this particular way just allows us to really simplify our code. And generally, when it comes to code, simpler code is easier to manage. It typically breaks down less and ultimately makes your life a lot easier. How good is that?